Now let's assign the carbons. So looking at those carbon spectra, the first feature that I'm going to look at are looking for aldehydes and ketones, which have a shift of over 200. We've got two possible aldehyde ketones in here, both of them are ketones. That was the funny little molecule that we said had the ketone and the secondary alcohol. And then here was the methoxy acetone. So looking at all our spectra, the only two that have a shift past 200 are C4 and C6. Now, can we figure out which of C4 and C6 goes for these ones? Well, each one of them, once you remove the carbon two in both cases, has got one, two, three, one, two, three more signals. So that doesn't help us too much. What does help us a little bit, however, is that when you think about carbon bonded to oxygen, that should be between about 59 and 90. Now, in this molecule here, the um, methoxy acetone, both C3 and C4 bond to an oxygen, whereas in this funky little compound, only C3 bonds to an oxygen. So I would expect, therefore, this methoxy acetone to be C4 because you've got those two carbon oxygen um, likely peaks here, and then C6 to go with this funny little molecule Let's go ahead and put that there because there's only the one for C3. So adding in the numbers, C2 here was the ketone. C3 and C4 are the ones bonded to the oxygen. I would put C3 further downfield because it's closer to the ketone group. And then, of course, pour C1 well down here, um, close to the ketone group, but it's bonded to a carbon rather than C3 and C4, which both bond to oxygens. And now looking at C6, obviously this is the ketone, C2 here. C3, we've already said, is the one bonding to the oxygen there. And then these two down here, obviously C1 and C4. I would imagine that C1 is the one that's ever so slightly further downfield because C1 is closer to the carbon double bond O. However, I would be not put any kind of money on it whatsoever. These two have a C1 and C4. So two assigned quite nicely based on the aldehyde and ketones. So having removed those uh, two spectra that have the ketone really far down field shifts, the next thing I'll look at is I'll say, well, I'm expecting there to be four carbons in these molecules. And most of my molecules have got four different types of, car of carbon. However, there are two spectra and two molecules that only have three carbons or three carbon peaks in there. So there are the two remaining molecules that I would expect to have um, three peaks because in both cases they've got this identical methyl group, two methyls there, two methyls there. Looking at a slightly bigger picture, these are isopropyl groups. Okay, and then here are the two spectra, C1 and C7, that have three peaks in there. Now let's go ahead and try and assign these. Okay, both of them have got a significantly downfield peak. Well, we expect that because we've got an acid group and an ester carbon there, acid carbon and ester carbon that appear between about 160 and 185. So that's those. Okay, so those are not going to be much help to us in identifying them. However, continuing on, spectrum C1 has just got two peaks that are around where we would expect there to be um, sort of just boring old carbons bonded to carbons. C7, however, has got this peak right here at about 68. And that's smack in the region where we expect a carbon that's bonded to an oxygen. Well, there's no carbons bonded to an oxygen here, other than, of course, the acid group, which we say is this one. But in this molecule here, in this ester, we have C2 is bonded directly to an oxygen. So I'm going to say that C7 is of this ester here. Now let's go ahead and assign the carbons. Obviously, C1 there, the ester carbon bonded to two oxygens. This one here is going to be C2 because it's bonded to an oxygen. And then this peak here is going to be the two methyl groups. And again, something I don't want to push too much, but it's worth noting that this peak is twice as big as these two peaks because there are two carbons there. Now let's make sure C1 matches up with this particular structure here. Again, the in this case, acid carbon, C3 right there. Then we've got C2 
and C1. C2 is closer to the acid group, so a bit further downfield. C1 further away, so further upfield. And again, although I should get shot for saying this, note that C1 peak, because there's two of the carbons, twice as high as the other ones, certainly higher than the other ones. Okay, so we've got C1 and C7 now assigned. Let's see what's left.